question, one of the most common questions that I usually get in the workplace, in the workplace or from amongst my friends from the non cryptocurrency people, what I call normal people, mm -hmm. um, is the question is, why is cryptocurrency worth money? They compare it to a dollar bill printed on paper. They compare it to a plastic credit card. And that's what they ask. Do, do you have an opinion on that? Either of you guys, do you have an opinion? Why is cryptocurrency even worth anything? Yeah, it, it's an excellent question, uh, Rick. Um, just, just to explain where um, I derive my uh, uh, sort of um, views on, on cryptocurrency, I would like to say that when I entered the space, I, I saw that there's a lot of hype around a lot of stuff. There's a lot of uh, false information and, you know, uh, there was a lot of people who were over, you know, the zealots um, in the space. Um, and I wanted to just step back and say, you know, what is the, what is, what is money, right? Um, you know, it's kind of funny that me as somebody who has been in the financial industry for 10 years and 10 plus years uh, is asking that question. But uh, to, to be honest with you, we, we don't even ask that question ourselves. It's just money is money. It's just uh, um, given to you uh, and, and you operate within those constraints. But um, I read, um, I, I cannot recommend that that author, author enough, uh, Jack Weatherford. Um, he has written a book, I believe it's called A History of Money. And he wrote it in 1999. He just basically looks at the evolution of money uh, from an anthropological point of view. And it just looks at it as, as a social phenomena. Um, and it's, it's just in stark contrast with what um, we, the, the financial folks, uh, are, are accustomed to seeing money as. Um, and you will see that uh, the way the money has evolved is that uh, it used to be stones, it used to be coffee, it used to be based on commodities, and then all of a sudden something what called the, the, what's called the tokenized um, uh, form of money, which is gold, uh, um, sort of all of a sudden emerged as, as a standard. Um, and, and then from that point of view, uh, from that point on, governments took over the, 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 the uh, ability to, to stamp money and, and produce money and whatnot. Um, but even then, the, the the commodity itself was hard to uh, come by. So uh, inflation actually was born in that in 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 um, in in Great Rome, basically back in the day, where the the emperors would say, "Okay, just file off some some you know the, the edges of some coins in the treasury, and then make more coins." And then people actually caught up with that, and then adjusted the value of the coin according to uh, how much was uh, was taken off the coins. Um, so. To answer to, to 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 answer your long to to make my long answer short, um, money has no intrinsic value in and of itself. Um, anything that you see in the world has no intrinsic value. It's something. Um, any I would say any any monetary unit uh, in and of itself uh, has no intrinsic value. And the 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 thing that gives it value is the ability of the governments to basically say. Um, this is money, and I want uh, my taxes to be paid in it. Um, and and the system that basically says uh, I want, uh, you know, this this is legal tender. Um, so in the United States, uh, strangely enough, legal tender does not does not only, uh, as far as I know, uh, is not, is is not only uh, the uh, the U.S. dollars you could pay with anything you want. That's why you know paying taxes with Bitcoin is possible. Um, in other countries, that is not um, unfortunately the case. You know where the governments uh, pretty much uh, impose uh, the the local currency on their population and say, you know, this is the only thing that you can uh, within the borders of this country you can you can use to to uh, to exchange um, value for uh, for money. Um, now that being said, there is a case to be made for um, money to exist outside of the realm of governments. Um, and that's uh, that, that, that's a really particularly hard um, argument to make because we're living in, in, in advanced economies where the rule of law and, and, and the institutions make everything easy, everything possible. Um, that, that is not the case in, in, in other countries that are going through a turmoil. Or the the governments are not as uh, as uh, democratic, or uh, you know, um, uh, the ones that that uh, do not, you know, respect the rights of their citizens. So those are the places where an ex extrinsic or a, a an external source of money uh, could uh, become. 
pretty uh, valuable, I would say, because um, they present a way for the population to uh, to uh, preserve their wealth outside of the of their uh, f- financial systems that I, that that are um, that that exist within those borders. Now, um, and so this is just to, to case in point, you know. Um, I was born in Soviet Union, right? Uh, I, I, my, my mom and dad basically were a middle class citizens, and all of a sudden in 1991, uh, uh, the whole thing fell apart, and you know they had no money, and uh, they they had to. Uh, it's 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 a fascinating sort of history, uh, uh, economic history for uh, for for me at least to to go back to to understand what what money is and how it derives its value. And at that point, I would say that everybody took their life savings and put on carpets, cars, whatever things that they saw that that could become useful as store of value. Um, now, um, the reason why they did that was because uh, they realized that the money that they had in the bank, the, the pieces of paper were going to be worthless within two days, three days, because the government collapsed, the whole system collapsed. And um, they like, just imagine that you you have worked your, your butt off, uh, let's say, for you know 50 or 60 years, and you have a nice retirement fund. And then all of a sudden, you know, your government says, you know, by the way, uh, we're just reshuffling the whole thing. And, you know, uh, you know, our currency is not going to be worth that much. So um, uh, if you want, you can just go to your bank and uh, withdraw all your money. Um, so what you do, you just go to the bank and yeah, banks, by the way, did not have all the money. Um, so they had to stay, uh, you know, and in, in, in the line to, to get their money. And if they got their money, it was just 20% of whatever they had and put all of that into whatever they could find to buy, um, as a store of value. Now, imagine if they had access to cryptocurrencies, would not be so much easier. That would be the best way to preserve value. And. I would say the best way to create uh, uh, a um, a counterbalance to excessive uh, sort of moves by the governments that would impoverish their uh, uh, population. So it's it's um, in the absence of, of of democracy, that's the next best thing the the cryptocurrencies could offer to countries that are totalitarian. Let's just put it that way. Um, to basically give them a, a, a way out if uh, things go really bad. Um, so yeah, that's 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 basically the 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 short uh, the long long answer to, to your question. Um, I want to I want to make a distinction here though, uh, Rick. Um, there is a difference between uh, Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies like Cardano, Ether, and EOS. And um, as I write in my report, that that is uh, available for downloading um, for for whoever is interested. Um, the pure cryptocurrency plays are the easiest to create, but they are the hardest to defend and hardest to uphold. Um, and in this space, I think beyond Bitcoin, I, I don't think anybody else is going to be uh, successful in that regard, unless you know you attach some privacy sort of. Uh, um, um, features to them and say, you know, uh, in addition to being a coin, this this thing is also private. Um, but um, it's uh, Bitcoin and 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 pure coin uh, plays are completely different in the sense that they are nothing else but coins. Uh, they do not represent computation. They do not do anything else except for holding uh, holding the value or transferring value. Which, um, by the way, the the Cardano and Ethereum and EOS is of the world do too. But in addition, they are capable of doing computation, which actually brings me to my very interesting point that uh, these coins, like Cardano, the platforms, they are the ones who are going to actually be able to eat the world in a sense. Just imagine um, that uh, you know the banking system, the way it works right now, is that it hasn't permeated the whole society, the whole world. And there are many transactions that are happening um, off the current financial system that go undetected. Now, these platforms will allow people to transact on on transact on 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 uh, uh, very small scale and capture the value that way. It creates value in addition to being 
the money, it creates value. It, it reduces costs for the current solutions that exist. Um, and it also allows people to have a bank account uh, and, uh, you know, have a, a, a number of opportunities to, to, uh, to use the platform and it, the dApps that it will house to, uh, to conduct their businesses. And that's where its huge potential is. Um, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is not going to be as valuable as Cardano, uh, but Bitcoin has a different battle to, to, uh, to, uh, to fight. It's its main sort of uh, you know narrative at this point is the store of value, and it wants to capture you know X percent of uh, the the total market of gold or total market of of currencies. And uh, apart from just being currency, there isn't much to to uh, you know to argue for Bitcoin except for the fact that it is agreed that it is money, or people agree that it is money. Uh, whereas for Cardano, you can say, okay, this is um, a, a token that can transfer value, just like Bitcoin. It's stable, um, but it also can uh, be used to fuel transactions, fuel computations. That will be helpful for you as a business or as an individual to conduct within the realm of, of Cardano blockchain.